Let me start uh, my presentation. This is exactly about uh, troubles with uh, large identity providers. So first of all, uh, short introduction. Uh, so I'm working in IT. Well, recently I found it's 15 years. <laughs> it's like really a lot. Have some security experience in the past. And uh, right now, almost uh, all my time, I'm doing uh, architectures and management for uh, big ecosystems. Uh, and big, it means millions of uh, users. And uh, also, I spend a lot of time uh, making design for identity providers. That like, happens this way in my career, but I work with IDP a lot. And in my free time, I'm usually climbing somewhere on the rocks. So yeah. Um, what we will talk about? So we will talk about uh, several things, starting from the beginning, what is it identity providers, and what is the expectation from identity providers. First troubles that you will face when you will develop identity providers. And then we will talk in more details about uh, some specific issues and uh, how to mitigate them. And then I will do some pessimistic conclusion. So first of all, uh, well, what is it identity provider and what is the expectations from identity providers? So I personally believe that uh, identity providers, this is a one of the like, most popular things to develop. So basically, there's a small audience here that I can ask uh, who like, at least once in your life uh, developed something with like, uh, login, password, and session management. Who developed? Audience. Who, who developed, you know, logins, passwords, session management stuff at least once in your life? At least HT access? Yeah, okay, I see. Even in the, you know, small statistical check shows that like half of people developed something related at least to authentication. However, this is probably first uh, basic thing that identity provider uh, need to do, authenticate users. But if you're going deeper, even on the first stage, for example, of your company, uh, uh, when your company is still small, you already have uh, some additional requirements. So expectation is that you not only will authenticate users, but you also will uh, authorize them and probably you will manage some kind of like user profile information and also, a bit later, you will have requirements related to security, privacy, and maybe support of uh, other multiple mobile platforms. So, and in the end of the day, you need documentation if your company growing. But this is very, very high level overview of functionality. So if you're going deeper, there are actually much, much more functions and things that you should develop. And these things eventually business will ask from you, so you should be ready. And so what is the problem here? Uh, basically, you're usually starting from something simple. You're starting, as I said, from uh, login and uh, password form. Then your company started to grow. Then you have uh, a lot of users. And what does it mean a lot? So biggest change, uh, change in software architecture happens somewhere above 1 million. So as soon as you're going above 1 million customers, you probably need to invest a lot into, into design of uh, identity providers, and you will spend a lot of time to maintain them. Uh, what kind of troubles you will have? Well, first of all, you need some source of inspiration, like, hey, how to develop, basically, identity provider? What should I do? And uh, there are several approaches. Well, when I made the security audits, I've seen a lot of identity providers developed based on some uh, software development books like Java Enterprise Edition something book and uh, sometimes it was even like Stack Overflow, how to manage user sessions, how to develop identity providers, etc., etc. And uh, um, that's not very reliable sources. We're usually causing a lot of troubles for you but uh, even if you will go some more official way, uh, let's say, for example, you're developing something uh, based on uh, OAuth documentation, 
And you're thinking, okay, this is all of documentation, RFC standards, so probably they have some uh, ideas how to implement identity providers. But if you'll check uh, standard, you will see diagrams kind of like this. So basically identity provider, this is what one box called authorization server. So nothing uh, about uh, what actually inside that box. And if you all, you know, check documentation, there are many diagrams, but uh, almost all of them like this. So basically no details ex exposed, like what should be inside the box. Also, if you'll check, you will see that uh, many companies were not sharing too much about how to uh, develop this part of uh, uh, infrastructure because uh, in most cases this is NDA, so no one wants to share uh, what to do and uh, you just can't find any reliable source of information. So this is a big challenge uh, for software developers and this is a like, first problem that you will face. Then second problem is, okay, so you doing something very simple. Let's say you decided to just go first with the authentication. Uh, you just have logins and passwords. And uh, so far, so good. You have maybe one server, or one container, or something like this uh, running in a cloud, and you're a happy person. But let's check, for example, uh, what will happen if you have a lot of customers. So. Even in super basic case, when you just have a, a username and password hash, uh, maybe you will spend around like 100 um, bytes per customer, and I'm significantly underestimating amount of uh, memory that you need for one user. But even in this case, so basically uh, plus minus you can handle well, around 650 million users maximum using one server. So what does it mean, basically? Again, I'm saying I'm underestimating amount of uh, uh, memory that you need to keep one user profile. So it means that this abstract uh, box from all the documentation, it's actually distributed system. So you cannot squeeze it into uh, one server or into one container. So uh, this is a first uh, complexity from software developer perspective because uh, you know that uh, distributed systems, this is a kind of new level of uh, issues and you will have that problem. This is kind of like just uh, as a matter of fact and uh, as soon as we started to talk about uh, distributed systems, so obvious uh, what comes in mind, there is a CAP theorem. Uh, and uh, uh, so CAP theorem tells us uh, that we should sacrifice one thing, consistency or availability. Uh, why we can sacrifice partitioning? Because partitioning will happen, as I said, system will be distributed, so you will have a several servers in your identity provider. Some of them can fail, so you should somehow survive partitioning issues. Uh, and what to choose? So consistency or availability. Like from identity provider perspective, uh, for example, let's say uh, you decided that, okay, my system will always work, but consistency, well, we can't guarantee. Uh, for identity providers, it's actually not good because uh, in that case, create two clients with duplicated client ID uh, and this is really big trouble for identity system because you basically usually are attaching tons of data to that client ID and if there are duplicates, somehow you need to resolve collision and you basically will probably delete one of user profiles or so do some complicated reassignment, not a way. Uh, another problem if you don't have a consistency, so let's say for example user changed password but system is not consistent, so password not updated. Another problem, not good. Okay, you're thinking, hmm, in that case, let's make it strictly consistent, but uh, let's give up some availability. Uh, in that case, you will have a huge issues with business because we will say, hey, identity provider is not working, users can't log in. So if users can't log in, they cannot buy, sell, or whatever your website doing. So also not good. And you have a like kind of complicated choice here, you know, 
uh, you uh, need some kind of trade-off. So trade-off is here that, uh, uh, and kind of simple solution that uh, can help. So basically you can decouple data uh, on data which should be strictly consistent and on data that should be uh, strictly available. Uh, in many cases, for example, credentials and uh, customer uh, IDs should be decoupled into different database and into different systems. So this is one of the things that you should do. Um, <clears throat> uh, for um, updates of profiles, very often you actually can do some delays there. You can do some uh, queues. It's not necessary to update them instantly. Uh, users usually not buffered when like username or profile picture not updated in time, so it's not a big deal. Um, well, another problem is that uh, even if your system works well, for example, okay, right now everything works fine, so you have a consistency availability and you don't have partitioning. Uh, so there is another theorem that says that even if everything works fine, so you should choose latency or consistency. So basically, Everything works fine, but still data can be consistent or you will have some delays. So uh, also trade-off uh, depends on your business. Uh, as I said, ID and credentials usually should be strictly consistent. Uh, and in that case, well, you probably can have some delays with, for example, password updates. But good news, uh, customers and users were not updating credentials very often and usually we're not updating them at all. So it's not a big deal. Uh, from our side, you know, for uh, other data, just put some examples here, but for example, if you have an e-commerce business, uh, address probably also should be uh, consistent because you're probably using address to deliver something to customer. But if you've seen in uh, many uh, e-commerce companies, when you're uh, purchasing some goods, in the end, they actually asking you every time to choose your delivery address. So why are we doing this? Why are we just not picking a delivery address from your profile? Exactly because of this. So because probably you updated your address, but uh, database is you know in a replication state, so update not came to the logistic platform yet, and you should check. So that can be done like this way. And this is just uh, first things that happen. So second problem, uh, as I said, uh, identity provider is usually one of the core parts of ecosystem because everyone expecting that user will be logged in because it's like, necessary for all business functionality. And we already know that even in our system what we just decided to do like with uh, ID, password, and simple user profile. We have a distributed database already. We have uh, some backend servers, containers. We probably will use CDN for front end. And uh, it's kind of becoming complicated. So we just started, so it's like just basic functions, authorization, authentication, customer profile. But it started to grow up. So if it's growing, of course, we will have uh, issues and it will be eventually broken. So what happens if identity provider broken? You, uh, and this I've seen a lot, so you have a huge pressure on your team for business. Uh, we will ask you to keep that system working like 24 per seven all the time. It's just uh, impossible, we know, but it will happen. So. People will complain, they will post in social media everywhere, but hey, your website is not working, what the hell, I can't log in. It's uh, additional pressure from uh, users. So second problem is, uh, as a matter of fact, if users can't log in to your website, we're going to another one. So this is also a huge issue. And um, as you can imagine, people who are responsible for identity providers, they usually uh, under constant pressure and under high level of stress because they always want to keep that system up. So what you can do to help in this situation, 
uh, one thing to do is 100% uh, automation of uh, all releases, deployments, rollbacks, because for particular this type of system, for IDP, each release is a stress, as I said, and uh, if something broken, it hits hard. So you should automate everything 100%. So no manual operations should be involved. Second thing is, as I said in the beginning, that some data and some functionality can be decoupled on uh, different microservices. And this actually helps to prevent large scale disasters because uh, you can uh, keep some functions more reliable than others and it can be fine uh, if you negotiated it well. And the thing is, uh, as soon as you have multiple functions, you also should have uh, service level objectives which covering them well because no one should expect 24 per seven uh, availability from that system from all parts. Um, so uh, how to make it work fine? So one, one thing that uh, IDP should support, uh, this is a, a graceful degradation or it's called sometimes partial degradation. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, even basic uh, situation when you split it, for example, authentication functionality and profile management, uh, if um, part of your system not working, for example, if this is a profile management, users can log in, it's already not such a big issue from business perspective. Uh, and the, the thing is that there are many, many other functions, as I mentioned in the beginning, and actually you probably need to have a lot of microservices instead of one solid box as a drone in documentation, and it will prevent a massive large-scale troubles. Well, still they are happening from time to time, but uh, you can survive them well. Um, so how you can uh, help situation more? Uh, you can uh, cluster user profiles. So uh, again, because uh, in the official RFC, uh, there is no like too much technical details. Of course, we're not telling you that uh, all customers that you have in your identity provider can be somehow clustered on, into different groups, but it's one of the possibilities. How it actually helps, for example, uh, geolocation clustering helps a lot uh, because if you have a like, big identity provider, big company, you have uh, hundreds of millions of customers, obviously for many customers there is like, one preferred region where we're living, where we're working, and from which region we're accessing your uh, website. In that case, uh, in that particular region, of course, uh, availability and consistency for data can be higher than in other regions where you can just have a, a backup. So it kind of makes sense, for example, to separate users based on the location. Uh, another possibility, for example, in uh, cloud providers, uh, they often separating users based on the tiers or like how much we basically uh, paid for support. Like whereas like primary customers who has a high availability or not primary customers who has a low availability. And this is just one of the things that you can do to uh, keep everything working like an acceptable uh, level. And maybe most natural thing, like this basically supported in almost all databases where some memory caches which are filled during operations, reads, writes, etc. So uh, normally if you have some active users, they, uh, they have, will have um, profiles cached, so it should happen like, in a natural way. Uh, if it's not happens natural way, you should just implement it and uh, it also kind of like helps to uh, prevent disasters and make everything works uh, better. So, uh, but let's talk more about this like additional features that you will implement eventually and what kind of problems you can face when you're implementing them. So first, and it sounds very funny, but first huge issue you will have when you will implement logout button. So this is one of the most troublesome things that I've seen 
uh, in my life. This is a logout and particularly global logout. This is very necessary function from a security perspective. So basically if you have a fraud attack, uh, you need to log out user and usually you need to log out from all devices together, terminate all sessions. Uh, and here it goes again. So we have a distributed identity provider. We probably have distributed session storage. We have a user connected from multiple devices and he has a session in multiple devices. So how to terminate them? This is a huge problem. Uh, well, there are several other things that you will develop. Uh, uh, very often you need to develop single sign-on. So uh, as soon as you just got another domain, like or your company bought someone and you need to join a couple identity systems together in different domains, you will have a single sign-on request. Uh, very often business will ask you to implement some kind of open ID federation or social alt at least. And mobile device support, of course, passwordless authentication and fraud prevention systems. So with logout, as I said, first problem is that uh, sessions are distributed across multiple nodes and across multiple devices. So how to revoke them? Uh, Simple approach, you can say, oh, okay, let's just remember that this user is logged out. Like, just remember user ID, for example, or session ID. Uh, what does it mean? Like, uh, if you have uh, some long session expiration time, for example, you have expiration time like six months, you should remember that this session was revoked. And you can assume kind of worst case scenario here that uh, you logged out user remembered that session is revoked. Okay, nice. User logs in again, then he logs out again, logs in again, logs out again. So for six months, you should keep all the session identifiers which have been kind of like logged out. And how many can be? How many users can be logged out? A lot. So this is a big issue actually. Um, there are some uh, problem also with implementation, as I mentioned before, there are always RFC and standards, and for example, particularly open ID standard uh, defines four different types of logouts. So if you want to implement logout, you can enjoy, read documentation, but even from development perspective, there are many, many different types of logouts and complexities how to just make them work. So, <clears throat> Um, second problem, as I said, as soon as you have two main domains or two websites, you want to have a single sign-on. Uh, well, all these business don't want to have a smooth transition. We don't want to ask login and password all the time. So, okay, uh, you're trying to implement a single sign-on. As usual, you're trying to find how to do this. Uh, and you will find nothing because again, no one shares how it's implemented particularly. Um, there are standards, OpenID Connect and SAML 2.0 who defining some flows for single sign-on. But if you will read these particular parts of standards, they are super complicated and huge. Well, but at least it's a way how to do this. Uh, if you try to use third-party cookies, uh, it's especially for legacy stuff, uh, you will have a lot of problems because right now the browsers are just banning these third-party cookies and, well, these types of SSO will stop to work eventually. Um, and funny thing is uh, in Wikipedia there is like a list of single sign-on implementations and this is list is very short and most of these implementations of course, this is a private companies who are selling them. It's, this is basically their IDP business. Um, second thing is uh, social auth and OpenID Federation. Like very often business says, oh, we want to have a very fast user registration. Could you make a login with Facebook feature? Kind of obvious thing to do. Okay, you uh, started to implement this thing. Then what kind of problems you will have? So first problem, there are actually a lot of social auth providers, so which one to implement? Uh, 
So second problem, as soon as you implemented this feature, you have a strict dependency on social auth provider. So if user clicking button login with Facebook, but there is some issue, uh, user can't log in, problem again. And there is a uh, big problem for you know um, IDP team because uh, in most cases uh, social auth providers they have not like high priority you know from perspective of, like support so uh, users probably still can log in uh, to Google but they can't log in using Google social auth. Uh, also you will have integration issues you know because all these companies who has a social auth they have a slightly different vision on the OpenID Connect standards. So you need to adopt to each vision. Another problem is mobile applications. So again, obvious thing, you may be started as a web, but eventually you will have mobile apps connecting to your website. And again, if you have millions of customers, it's certain that you will have a mobile applications, at least for two major platforms, Google, uh, Android, and uh, Apple iOS. So what kind of issues you have? No, first of all, again, basic stuff. You have two platforms, so you will develop two pieces of code, obviously. Plus Android has a huge change in like recent versions and uh, it's super fragmented platform. So you have uh, a lot of uh, updates which happened and you need to update your SDK, your code all the time. Uh, another problem from security perspective, uh, if you develop some ID SDK, you should take care about rooted devices or hacked devices because uh, there is a multiple kind of like issues related to uh, this because uh, if device is rooted very often, you can trust it. You also can lose uh, user credentials very easily, but how to detect these routing techniques changing. It's also constant updates for ID SDK team. Uh, and um, there is another problem. So let's say you found some critical flow in your identity provider or there is some security issue which you need to fix. Uh, how to update basically the code. So Let's say you have a big company, many businesses, many mobile applications. Each application has ID SDK inside. And how to make users to update all these applications in some, like, in one time. That's a big challenge for uh, ID team. Um, well, another thing uh, what right now popular or kind of can say on hype uh, this is a passwordless authentication. So uh, you probably heard about FIDO fast identity online. I several times attended FIDO Alliance meetings in Japan. It was quite funny because uh, on one of meetings, one big company will not tell name, uh, presented how they uh, tried to implement FIDO and failed. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. And FIDO uh, is a good idea, but uh, uh, right now um, the standard, I think one of the most bloated standards that exist in uh, ID world because um, all companies who participating in development of FIDO standard, they uh, trying to introduce their proprietary features and if you just want to like sit right now, sit down and like develop some FIDO passwordless based thing, you will fail, I can guarantee. Or it will take several years for you because just of, because of volume of the work uh, and scale of work here. Um, so sometimes also if it's not just like pure um, to a favor FIDO, sometimes it's to a favor with uh, SMS messages, like, uh, you know, poor people solution, let's use SMS, uh, or sometimes this is a TOTP or uh, each OTP generators. And there is another issues here. So basically uh, with SMS uh, right now, it's very easy to buy uh, devices for SIM cloning and uh, 
uh, if you're using um, two FA with SMS, not a solution because uh, phone numbers can be stolen by attacker and in that case, um, the attackers can receive SMS messages on behalf of user and just steal accounts. And uh, um, TOTP generators has another problem, you know, they're kind of quite reliable uh, and working very nice, but they have huge issue with time desynchronization. So if you implemented this thing and, you know, users just have some issues with clocks on devices, they can't log in. And this is one of the difficult thing, you know, to fix because many users, many devices, not always time is correct. And that's what your customer support will face a lot. You know, it's not like issue with TOTP, but it will be issue for you. And uh, hardware generators, uh, which uh, not time-based, hash-based, uh, they cost money. So you can give it to million customers. Uh, these devices just cost a lot. And they're not always reliable. So there's a link, for example, to the uh, article about uh, uh, RSA hack when there was like issue with uh, pseudo random generator which was very very pseudo random and uh, uh, RSA failed some military contractors but uh, overall um, situation here is tough so maybe it's still better to look on Fido but not implement by yourself maybe buy some existing solution Oh, by the way, and a side note, never use email for 2FA because this is the first thing that attackers usually hacking. This is an email um, mailbox of customers. So if you're using it for 2FA, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and next thing, you know, uh, if your IDP growing, uh, at some moment uh, you will have uh, one question from business and uh, investors how many actually real customers you have, how many real users you have. And to find who is a real customer and who is a spam account, bot account, you need fraud prevention system. And this is completely different thing. So this is a, you know, identity provider side service, which requires tons of investment, some machine learning stuff. So it's a big thing uh, to do. And again, not always you have uh, people to just develop that stuff by yourself. So another thing that everyone facing, if your company growing big, uh, you're attracting attention of government. And you should, you know, carefully fulfill all governance and regulation stuff. And when we're speaking about big companies with millions of customers, we're usually global. So you have not only one regulation, you will have regulations from all the sites, from all countries where you're working. And well, if you again checked the news recently for GDPR, for example, violations in Europe, companies like Google and Facebook, they paid a lot of money, millions of dollars. So just can kill business in some cases. If you want to uh, implement uh, protection measures, what kind of headache you will have? So one headache is uh, right to be forgotten. So user right now can ask, please delete my personal data from your system. Well, everything, almost everything that you can think about customer is qualified as personal data. And like try to answer to yourself, there is a customer data right now in my infrastructure and in my IT system. Like everywhere, in logs, in profiles, databases, on the disks, somewhere, and if user asks to delete, in many cases, it actually comes to IDP team and people asking, hey, delete, how? Well, it's your choice, how you will search and delete. Uh, and funny thing that everyone's seen in the internet, uh, constant management. Like if you just connected to almost any website, uh, you've seen probably this pop-up notification. Hey, we want to set up your some cookie. Are you okay or not okay? Yes, no. Okay, so this is some technical system too, which you also should implement and you also should keep this constant somewhere. And again, this is additional burden 
through IDP team. So I just list, like listed, um, I think, 10, 15 different problems that you can face. And uh, well, if you, you know, listen to that carefully, you can think, okay, maybe I shouldn't develop this. It's super complicated. Why I should waste my time on this? And why not to just buy completely an entire service? Why uh, not to use something from company outside? Uh, so that sounds very attractive. You know, for business, like, yeah, well, why not? We don't need to identity provider team. We will not develop anything. Uh, uh, very smart guys, we, you know, uh, know this FIDO, open ID, connect standards, we already implemented stuff, so let's just pay them money. Uh, no issues with regulations, because uh, these guys already uh, passed all possible audits and implemented everything. Um, Time to market advantage, like you just buy it, can buy it and just use, nice. But from our side, so that's actually my like personal challenges. Uh, you cannot buy so easy because there are hundreds of companies who are trying to offer these solutions. And um, so very often we're actually not supporting uh, big businesses. So they're saying, okay, this is enterprise ID, please buy, but uh, in fact, they can support like more than 100,000 accounts. So you just can't use for uh, any big business uh, that stuff. And uh, there is a huge trust issues. So basically, as I mentioned, if IDP not working, it's a panic. So it should be fixed right now. Uh, can you trust these companies? I don't know. As I mentioned, uh, for example, RSA was hacked in the past and uh, Google uh, authentication has issues uh, last year when Google Cloud customers couldn't log in. The same happened with uh, Amazon. So even big guys kind of failing. So can you trust uh, some other companies? Uh, that's very questionable. And uh, this is a huge vendor lock. As soon as you bought that thing, you can't escape. Because if you want to escape and you have like, I don't know, 100 million user accounts, well, good luck to migrate them somewhere. So, and keeping your business working at the same time. So it's almost uh, impossible. So uh, this is, uh, I can say, like sad, very sad pessimistic conclusion. So you will actually, if you're in a big company, uh, you will develop your identity provider by yourself. And this is a very high chance that you will do it. And you will develop all these supporting services. So this is uh, one of the probably most complicated software products that you will have. Uh, so, well, if you have a questions uh, or if you have uh, some uh, um, like uh, ideas or maybe want to correct me, so yeah, that's the time. I'm ready. Where, oh, I, I can. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> most likely answer will be no, but uh, is there or are there uh, open source free identity providers? For big companies, no. So it's, it's kind of a complicated question. There are good identity providers from like perspective of implementation of some small part of functionality. Like for example, there is a very good IDP open source which can do authentication and authorization. But as I said, the IDP also has a customer profiling, fraud prevention, consent management, etc., etc., etc. So there are like, there are like 15, 20 functions which you need and open source not supporting them. So yeah, like if you just need some fraction of that, you can find some code. But at least uh, from perspective of profile management, as I said, they don't have it. Usually we're asking you, please connect me to your profile storage. How you will design your profile storage for 100 million accounts, it's, it's, this is up to you. 
Yep, got it. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, uh, I'm Pikarin. Uh, it, I'm also uh, one of the service provider, uh, ban banking service I, I'm providing. So um, the, some FIDO uh, vendor came to me. Then <laughs> with your presentation, I decided to not to buy the FIDO <laughs> because the root, uh, root uh, violation uh, looks, uh, mm, I, I, I felt a little bit worried. Then now to me, uh, SMS uh, authentication, sh short, mail, uh, me short message uh, authentication looks the most uh, best approach for now. How do you think? So what I can say, uh, first of all, I'm actually not, not suggesting to buy FIDO. Uh -huh. I'm actually opposite suggesting not to develop by yourself because okay. if you want to develop by yourself, uh -huh. it's almost impossible right now because standard is gigantic. It's most bloated where I've seen, it's so huge. Okay. But uh, for 2FA, if you want to implement second factor authentication, mm -hmm. best approach, I think this is TOTP time-based time uh, one-time passwords. Okay. No, simply speaking, Google Authenticator, but this is uh, what, just one of implementations. Mm -hmm. This is probably easiest thing because everyone can install it to smartphone. Mm -hmm. This is reliable and no any chance that someone can steal SMS. But SMS, very easy to steal, actually. Mm -hmm. So TOTP is much easier. You just can open application, Whereas a six num six digit code, type in, done. So it's from user perspective very convenient. Fido is convenient if you, for example, have an iPhone or you have a device with a fingerprint reader, where you can just like go to website user uh, using fingerprints. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. But uh, for Fido, you need to buy some library mm -hmm. because again, if you want to implement by yourself difficult I'm not suggesting okay uh, actually uh, on your presentation uh, you mentioned like a fake fake sim s i m fake s i m yeah yeah sim cloning attack yeah yeah but actually we we don't see the fake sim how, how, uh, is there any news like uh, we have a fake sim on somewhere or? ah well if if you can see it it doesn't mean that it's not happening and uh, uh, the thing is that uh, equipment to do SIM cloning is quite cheap. No, cheap, it means it's around like 1,000 up $10,000. So it depends on setup. But basically for 10,000, you can create mobile like cell station, which will just interrupt like all uh, cell traffic in quite big area. And this attacks happens. Uh, I don't know which one is more popular. I, I know that for, uh, for example, uh, some te Telegram accounts have been stolen using uh, SIM cloning tactics in uh, some countries, will not mention which countries. Uh, but this attack is possible. possible. So it's, okay. it's, it's like, it just requires some investment, you know, but if it's like criminal organization, they can invest, you know? Mm. This is like, it's not a massive investment. Because uh, criminals right now, they can pay uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for exploit, for example, for iOS or Android. SIM cloning is cheaper, so for example, governments can use it and you know, criminals can use it. So yeah, and plus actually uh, time-based uh, one-time passwords, they cost nothing for you, but uh, SIM cloning and SMS messages, it's money. So basically you will, you will pay for each SMS message. Uh, I don't know. It's like for, from business perspective, I think TOTP is the best solution, more convenient for okay. users yeah. and for company too. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any more questions? Mm, yeah. I don't know. I can see these people online asking or is like anyone watching? Uh, well, there's no questions in the live chat at the moment, but uh, if uh, anyone watching online, uh, you can ask in the live chat. Uh, yeah, I can answer in chat. Okay, too. and we give you two, two minutes. 
Any questions? Okay. Doesn't seem to be anyone typing. So. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if uh, if uh, well, there are questions. So we can contact me, LinkedIn, and uh, ask them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Yuri.